my god, you guys. We have to talk about Austin McBroom's fight last night because it was so bad for him. From lying about the pay-per-view, not selling out the arena, to him losing at his own event. It's safe to say, last night was definitely embarrassing for him, especially after how much he's been hyping himself up. I'm gonna even more than I was going to. I'm gonna disrespect you even more than I was going to. I'm gonna embarrass you even more than I was going to. As you guys know, Austin's been planning his second influencer boxing event with his company, Social Gloves. Last year, he did the whole TikTokers versus YouTubers event, and that was a complete failure. Even though he did win against Bryce Hall, the business side was a complete mess. Staff didn't get paid, fighters weren't being paid, lawsuits were filed, and they hardly sold any pay-per-views. This time around, Austin claimed to have new partners and said he was ready to put on a bigger and better event. He announced his opponent, Anison Gibb, and he also announced the venue. The original venue was supposed to be the Crypto Arena, which seats 20 thousand people. But people quickly noticed that tickets weren't exactly flying off the shelf. Just like last year, it seemed like Austin wasn't really promoting the event. He posted a few Instagram promotions and showed videos of him training on YouTube, but the event wasn't being promoted the way it probably should have been. The event was originally scheduled for July 30th, but it was canceled last minute. Austin said that Gibb had some kind of head injury and wasn't able to get medical clearance in time for the fight. All I could really say is that it has nothing to do with me or social gloves, but the fight, Austin versus Gibb, may potentially have to be postponed. Which just made people think that once again, social gloves was being completely unorganized. You would think they would have made sure that Gibb had the medical clearance before booking a huge arena and selling tickets and setting a date. So for those who know, my fight was originally supposed to be for July 30th, but unfortunately my opponent did not pass his medical exam, which now we have a new date. For those who know, it is September 10th at Bank of California Stadium where the LAFC soccer team place. Now this was definitely an interesting choice. Austin couldn't even sell out the crypto arena, but then he goes ahead and books an even bigger arena, which doesn't make any sense because they only sold tickets for a small section of the arena. Someone tweeted, so at Social Gloves only have a tiny arena and a couple of thousand tickets on sale for their event next week. Here's how well they are selling. Unsold tickets are blue and full rows of gray are also unsold. And guys, these tickets were not selling at all. This screenshot was only taken last week and all the blue area is unsold tickets. And a lot of the grayed out areas are sections that they aren't even using. I think the worst part about this whole situation is Catherine and Austin canceled their dream wedding for this. Catherine finally picked a date to get married. She said the date of September 9th had a lot of meaning to her and they had everything planned. They did a video touring wedding venues. They were supposed to pick fans from the Ace Fest to attend the wedding. Uh, we obviously know the day we want to do it. Now it's just really about the location and really trying to figure out the logistics of everything. So we're gonna keep you guys in the loop, obviously and uh we're super excited it's finally time and then they just canceled it you know we had this venue locked in we already put the deposit we're excited we were about to do like the final things for the wedding yeah. and then we so find it, out that we can't do yeah. it he could have booked the fight on any other day but he chooses the day right after they planned their wedding day for but now let's talk about the day of the fight Austin started off the day with an Instagram story thanking people for supporting him and of course he had to call out his haters. Before we get today started I just want to take a little moment real quick and say a little something. I don't want to get emotional but uh, I just want to say I appreciate everyone's support to the end. Um, you know as you all know it's been a roller coaster with this journey that I've been on and there's been a lot of people trying to sabotage you know, my name and this event, people saying it was canceled when it was not. Um, a lot of misinformation, a lot of false lies, a lot of false narratives. Now at this point, there was still next to no ticket sold. Mad Catster got a screenshot on the day of the fight and at best, it looks like maybe 30% of the seats were sold. 
It was like no one cared about this event. There were people tweeting that they had no idea that the fight was even today, and that just goes to show you how little funding Austin put into promoting the event. For some reason, Austin thinks that he has as big as a platform as he did five years ago, and that he can sell out arenas simply by putting out one YouTube video. But things have changed for him. The Ace family aren't pulling the views that they used to, and even if they were, I don't think boxing would be his subscribers' choice of content. So just like last year, Social Gloves was offering a pay-per-view for $40 through their website. But a lot of people were actually supposed to get the link for free. If you attended the Ace Fest and purchased a VIP ticket, you were guaranteed to watch Austin's next fight for free. It was one of the main perks for buying a VIP ticket and the reason why the dollar value was so high on the Ace Fest tickets. Well, after Ace Fest, there was no update or anything about the free pay-per-view. People never got a link, they never got a code, and they were left wondering how to access the fight only minutes before it was due to start. One person said, I'm pretty frustrated that I have no idea how to access the fight for free, even though I bought AceFest VIP tickets as advertised. No word or guidance on how to access it. I tried to DM the McBrooms hoping for a miracle, but sadly, nothing. Now here's where things start to get messy. The fight was scheduled to start at 6 p.m. Everyone was lined up waiting outside. People were waiting on the pay-per-view link. And only 30 minutes before 6, they pushed back the fight by two hours. A media outlet who was there live tweeting wrote, Delayed. The McBroom Gib event website has pushed the fight broadcast back two hours, only 30 minutes before expected start time. Fans are also still unable to enter the stadium. Amanda from Swell Entertainment went to the fight, and she confirmed that they weren't letting people in, writing, Gates were supposed to open five minutes ago, still not letting us in. When she was finally let in, she was showing us just how empty the stadium was. People were scattered about, only tiny portions of the stadium were actually being used, and there were huge gaps of unsold seats. It was also being reported by people there that they were starting to let people in for free to try and make the stadium look more full. Someone tweeted, Sources inside the venue say only 200 tickets sold and 1,000 given away for the McBroom Gib event. There's only approximately 250 fans waiting outside to be let in. Now, can you imagine buying a ticket for $500 for this fight and then finding out they were just handing out tickets for free because no one wanted to come? Of course, it's not confirmed, but that's what a lot of people inside the venue said they were witnessing, so yikes. Now, let's talk about the actual fight. Gibb did his walkout first and then Austin went second. Austin's walkout actually got interrupted by someone arguing with him and his team. At first, when I was watching the live feed, it kind of looked like it was some fan sitting on the side and shouting stuff at Austin, but it was actually a staff member. This YouTube channel called Fight Hype got footage of this guy yelling at Austin's team. It's so loud in there that it's kind of hard to make out what he was saying, but it sounded like he was telling them that they couldn't enter through the spot that Austin wanted to enter through. His team started entering through there anyways, and that's when things got a little bit chaotic. The guy started screaming that he was going to be taking all of Austin's money. I'm taking his money. LAPD! He's got two I'm taking his money. He's a bunch of you. And I'm going to point it out too. Because of you and him, I'm taking his money. At one point, Austin looked back and gave this guy a dirty look, but he keeps on walking in that direction and his team gets the guy away. So no idea what that was actually about, but whatever it was, that guy was not happy with Austin. When the fight started, you could tell Austin was so full of himself. He got the first shot and knocked down Gibb, and he kept smiling at him and standing over him when Gibb was trying to get back up. At that moment, a lot of people actually thought that Austin was going to end up winning until he got knocked down not once, not twice, but five times. After the second time, Austin literally couldn't even stand properly. You could tell he was so dizzy and so out of it, but he kept asking to be put back out there and try again. There were so many times where Austin went to swing and you could just tell that he was really disoriented. He kept getting knocked down over and over again and he took a lot of really hard hits. Like the entire time I was watching, I just kept thinking, 
how has this ref not called it off yet? Last year when Austin was going against Bryce Hall, the ref ended up calling the fight even though Bryce wanted to get back up and try again. But this ref, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a boxing fan, so maybe I'm just not used to seeing it, but I felt like it should have been called after the second time that he fell to the ground. There was one point where Austin couldn't even catch himself and he just fell all the way down and his head bounced off the floor. I mean, Austin literally could not even get up. They showed him laying there being completely out of it and it's being said that he had to sit there for 15 minutes before he could even walk away. A YouTube channel called Fight Hype caught Austin walking back to his dressing room and he was being held up by his team and he was walking like you could just tell he was extremely dizzy. They also caught Catherine walking back to the room and asked her how she was doing and she said that she was fine. But Catherine did not look fine and she has said so many times that she doesn't like him boxing. It was later reported that Austin was taken out of the dressing room on a stretcher and taken away to the hospital. With the mirror writing, YouTube star Austin McBroom was taken straight to the hospital after being knocked down and out by Annis and Gibb. Now, a lot of people are starting to say that the ref should have called it way before he did. Apparently, he's actually been a referee for over 20 years, so a lot of people were surprised that he let it go on as long as he did. Here's what people had to say. Ref should have called it off numerous times. The fight should have stopped so much sooner in my opinion. That was getting dangerous. Five knockdowns and wobbly. That could cause some real permanent damage. But other people pointed out that Austin was asked time and time again if he was okay, and every single time he said he wanted to continue. It just goes to show that Austin's ego is way too big to realize maybe he isn't okay and he should walk away before he actually gets really hurt. The next morning, Austin updated his Instagram and said he'd be taking some time off. Good morning, everybody. Last night was fun. It really was. Big shout out to Gib. Congratulations, my guy. Well deserved. I'm excited to see what you're going to do next. Left me a little battle wound right here, but I'm good. And uh, for me, spend time with family and take a little break. I've been going at it for the past six months. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for all the love and support as always. Love you guys. One person did point out that his ride in the ambulance probably cost more than he made in ticket sales last night. So hopefully he paid these people far in advance because I have a feeling we're going to see a repeat of last year. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.